Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Michael Fortin. I am the Director of Promotion for the Maine Tax Portal here at Maine Revenue Services. It's my pleasure to be your MC for our webinar series on the new Maine Tax Portal for Rollout 2. Today, we have a special session for payroll service providers, and we're glad that you've joined us today. During today's webinar, you will hear that on December 1st, 2022, the Maine Tax Portal will become available for most Maine businesses to file and pay taxes, view notices, and much more. You can visit the Maine Tax Portal information page at maine.gov forward slash revenue forward slash portal to learn when you can get started for your specific tax type. It's important to note after May 31st, 2023, our existing systems, iFile, Meters, and EasyPay will all be deactivated for sales, use, service provider, and quarterly withholding taxes. Although meters will remain open for W-2 and 1099 submissions after May 31st, 2023. You can prepare for this transition by printing your filing history from iFile prior to May 31st, 2023. Our presenters today will be discussing this further and I'll remind everyone again at the end of the webinar about these important dates. Before we get started and introduce our panel, I have a few housekeeping items to review with everyone. First, the raise hand button at the bottom of the Zoom screen will not be used for today's session. However, if anybody has a question for our presenters, attendees can type them in by using the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. The presenters will answer as many questions as possible. If we're unable to address your questions live, we will follow up via email following the webinar. There may be times when you'd like the presenter to repeat a step that you've missed, or perhaps you're simply unable to watch the entire session. Therefore, it will be helpful to know that today's webinar will be recorded and can be viewed by anyone who's registered at the conclusion of the event. There are no documents or presentation materials you'll need for today's webinar. Feel free to take notes, but know you can always re-watch the recorded session anytime you'd like to review the material. And next, we should be reminded there can be unexpected technical challenges with any virtual presentation. Our presenters are all speaking to you live in different locations. We appreciate your understanding and ask for your patience if anyone should experience technical difficulties. That concludes all of our housekeeping items. We're ready to get started. It's my pleasure to ask our two panelists, both from the Income and Estate Tax Division, to join me on the screen to get us started. And I'd also like to extend special thanks to Veronica, who is part of our support team and helping us with the demonstration of the main tax portal. James and Tim, take it away for us. Hello, everyone. My name is James. I am a senior tax examiner in the Income and Estate Tax Division, and I'll be here to answer any questions you may have throughout our session. By using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, I'll address your questions as promptly as possible. Depending on your device, you may need to hover your cursor over the bottom of your video feed to access the toolbar containing the Q&A feature. Thank you for your attendance and feel free to ask any questions throughout our session today. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tim Applegate. I'm a tax section manager at Maine Revenue Services. I have the pleasure of overseeing the withholding unit in the income and estate tax division. I'm sure if I, I have emailed and spoken to many of you, and I just want to thank you for being able to attend our webinar in such short notice. So the reason why we've uh, organized this webinar is in, to introduce you to our new filing system, the Maine Tax Portal, and to let you know when and how to transition from meters to the main tax portal. <clears throat> so today we'll be demonstrating how to sign up for a username to start using the main tax portal. And it's a little different uh, for some of the viewers. We have filers, and this refers to entities filing for themselves, such as schools or towns, businesses. And there's a separate uh, set up for payroll service providers. Next, we'll be demonstrating how to submit files and also how to view submissions. Unlike meters, you'll be able to view previously submitted files and other main tax portal activities. For payroll processors, also unlike meters, you will have the ability to request access to your client's withholding account. Once access is granted, you'll have the ability to amend client returns, view payments, 
and view notices. Uh, so please remember that questions can be submitted in the chat during the webinar, and we'll answer or respond to your questions during the webinar as possible. Uh, so what is happening with meters and bulk filing? Well, in short, meters is going away, and it is being replaced by the main tax portal, which allows for bulk filing and a much more transparent and comprehensive user experience. Uh, Please note that during the webinar, we will use the terms bulk file and bulk filer. This term refers to any prior meter meters user. And so when is all of this happening? Well, the main tax portal will be available for use on December 1st, 2022. Now meters will be shut down on May 31st, 2023 for the 941ME and W3ME submissions. Now, please note that W2s and 1099s will continue to be filed on meters for tax year 2022. And meters will remain active after May 31st, 2023 for W2 and 1099 submissions only. And uh, if you've been looking, please note that the specifications for both 1099s and W2s will not be changing for 2022, and they should be posted either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Okay, so we are, we're going to start by, um, well, we started here on the main revenue services homepage, and we're gonna take a look at our meter specifications. And so we're gonna click on the electronic services link. And that brings us to where we have our meter specs in the withholding panel on the right. And as you can see here, we have the 2022 meters slash MTP, which is the main tax portal uh, withholding spe specifications. And this is for fourth quarter. And please note that we have also provided a sample file. So let's take a look at a couple of the changes here. And here we go. Okay, um, so there are a few new things for Q4, and we hope that this doesn't require any programmatic changes. Um, for one, the main tax portal, as I already said, will be available for filing and paying beginning on December 1st, 2022. The second one is very important. Uh, we've seen a lot of files coming through meters that don't necessarily match the main re revenue services published specifications. Uh, please note that all future filings must conform to the specifications or they will not pass validation. So remember that they have to, they have to meet the specifications. Uh, there is a change to location on the e-record location 190 for the no workers, no withholding option. And here we are. Please note that if there are no employee records or S records, there's no T record required. This is added as an option. It's not a mandatory change. If it makes it easier for you to omit the T record, that's okay. Uh, we've been asked uh, whether reporting $0 filers or employees is required. It's not required, but you may choose to report all employees, even if there is no withholding. So on the E record, location 190, there are two options. A zero indicates that there are no workers and that there will be no S records following it. A one indicates that there will be S records. However, it is possible to report an S record with a $0 amount for withholding. And next we have a change to some wording on e-record location 225 to 228. Uh, this change to total number of employees slash payees. We removed subject to main withholding for clarification. And on this line, you'll just enter the total of the S records uh, reported for this employer. And lastly, 
Uh, Maine withholding accounts opened after December 1st, 2022, will receive an eight digit account ID. Example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, the legacy IDs or the 11 digit account IDs that you've uh, been accustomed to can still be used. So all main withholding accounts will have an eight digit account ID, whether they have an 11 digit or not. Accounts opened after December 1st, 2022 will have the eight digit account ID only. So please note that, it, that this is a numerics only field. And if you're using anything less than eight, uh, 11 digits, it is left justified. And with the new account numbers, there is a dash in the middle, and in this field, the dash may be included or omitted. And we'll, we'll take a closer look at the account numbers in a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hop on over to the main tax portal, and this is what it looks like. And we are working in, as you can see in the upper left-hand side, a testing environment, so it's a demonstration environment only. Um, the main tax portal offers various functions for taxpayers to file, pay, and manage their account information. On the home page, we can see options that are available without creating a username or password. This is also called a non-logged in. However, filing and making payments are generally only available once you've logged in. And we're going to begin by demonstrating how to create a username. And we'll click on create a username. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a payroll service processor login. And you'll see the three options here. And if you are a payroll processor, you want to click the I'm a licensed payroll processor. And now this is only for payroll service providers with no main employees or who don't have a withholding account in Maine. Example would be a payroll service provider whose employees are not located in Maine and you are filing withholding in Maine for your clients only. And if this is your first time here, we'll just click the next button. And here you'll want to enter your information. So here you'll put your federal EIN in, you'll put your legal name. And in this case, we've just made up a name, main payroll. And then you'll enter your address. <clears throat> and you'll see at the bottom here that the address needs to be verified by the USPS. So we'll go ahead and click that. And we're going to go ahead and verify that. So perfect. That's been verified. Now here on the username, create a username, and this will be what you use to log into the main tax portal. Uh, you'll want to put a real name here, not Jane Smith, a real email. Uh, and please note that this is what Maine Revenue Services will use to reach out and contact you with. Also note uh, here with this password, that it's a minimum of 12 characters, a maximum of 32. You need one uppercase and one lowercase, a one number and a special character. And below there's a, a security question or a secret question that you can enter. And that's just to help you. If you forget your password, help you retrieve it. And as with the email address, please put in a valid phone number where we can reach somebody. And then we'll hit next. And on this page, you want to look through, make sure everything is correct. And if it's not correct, you can hit the previous button. Make any corrections that you need to. Let's say your phone number's not right. Oops, 5554. And then we'll go to the next page, review it and submit. Now here it's going to ask for an email. Uh, this can be, it doesn't have to be the same email, but it can be. Uh, but this is where the confirmation will be sent.
and that's it. You'll want to keep this for your records. So we've created an account for a payroll service provider. Now, if you're not solely a payroll service provider and file or remit withholding under your FEIN, you're going to create an account like this. So again, just like last time, we're going to create a username, click that link. And so who might this be? Um, we have school districts, towns, businesses, and this can also be a payroll service provider who has employees located in Maine. So in this demonstration, we're going to be a school district. So we're going to select the, I represent a business or organization, and we'll click next. And in order to proceed, you will have to have a few details about your organization ready. So you're going to need your EIN, your FEIN, and one of the following. An amount due from one of the last three returns you filed, or an amount to be refunded, or a letter ID. So starting in, no, in late November, you'll receive an invitation letter to create a main tax portal account. You will receive it because you have a main withholding ID. If you have a sales tax or other tax account, you may receive more than one letter. And any of these letters can be used to create a main tax portal account. So notice here, we've entered the FEIN and we're selecting the account type income tax withholding. And that's, for our purposes, that's what you'll need. Um, and here we're gonna select the letter ID. and hit next. And then each letter has its own ID and you'll enter that in there. And then you'll put the date on the letter and then we'll hit next. And just like the last demonstration, very similar here, the username is what you'll use to log into the main tax portal. And again, put in a real name here a withholding, or sorry, an email where we can reach somebody at. And again, with the passwords, a minimum of 12, maximum of 32 characters, an upper and lower case letter, a number, and a special character. And secret question, just in case you forget your password. And again, like the email, please put in a phone number where we can reach somebody. And we'll hit next and be sure to review the information. And if it's correct, we'll hit submit. Okay. So now we've created a username. And now that we've demonstrated how you can do that, we're going to log into the main tax portal with a demonstration business that has already been set up. Uh, this is a taxpayer who's opted to send, well, we'll get into that in a second. We have uh, what's called two-factor authentication. So this taxpayer has opted to have a authentication code sent to a phone. In our demonstration environment, we're just able to populate this and continue logging on. And once logged in, we can see this taxpayer named Example Business is registered for various tax accounts and has access to each on the main tax portal. On the right, we can see various hyperlinks available that allow the user to file or make payments. The action center tab at the top here um, stores reminders to file and or pay. The settings tab lets us update mail delivery or add a default payment method. Under the more tab, you will see several account maintenance and transactional functions, including where you will be able to submit your bulk withholding file. This can be found under the Payments and Returns panel on the left. And you'll click on the Upload Bulk Withholding File. Now here, uh, we are going to have three options, the 941ME, the amended 941, and the W3. For this demonstration, we're only going to be using the original 941ME for 2022, 
And <clears throat> this is a Q4 return. Okay, so here is where you uh, have a link to the file specifications. If you need to look at them, we can also click on the attach bulk withholding file, and this is where you attach your file. So we're going to choose a file, press OK, and we get an error. And the reason why this is, is because this is a PDF. Um, if it's not a text file, you will get this error. It's not an Excel file. It's not a PDF. It's not a word. It has to be a text file. So now we're going to upload a file with the correct format. And on validation, it either validates or we get some errors. This is a very common error we see. Uh, notice line one does not have 275 characters. Uh, the file has excess or misplaced character or is missing information. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to hop into that file, take a look, and see what's wrong. And in this example, if we scroll all the way to the right, we'll notice that line one is longer than the rest. And if we bring that uh, carriage return line feed right back in line with the others, then everything should work. If you did backspace here, it could throw other things out of alignment. So make sure if you have this error that everything lines up. And now we have to remove this file to upload a, a clean file. So we're going to select another file, drop that in there. And please note, we've gotten a few more errors. Um, of course, we've done this on purpose. So line two, withholding account ID is not registered with the state of main or is inactive for the filing quarter. Also, this is a very, very common error. If you receive this error, what you'll need to do is remove that employer from your file, then contact the employer, have them register for main withholding account ID. If the employer had a withholding account and needs to reactivate it, they can contact main revenue services and we can um, guide them through reactivating their withholding account ID. So next is a mathematical error. Notice it says voucher payments must match the sum of the amount deposited. And then the next one is tied to that. The income tax due must equal the difference between the quarterly main income tax withheld. Uh, we put that in there just to show that all the mathematical errors need to work. So let's go take a look at our file. And we'll see where the error is. Okay, so the highlighted line right here is telling us that there's $3,700 of payments. When in fact, the R records are only 3,600. So once we change that one digit, it should clear up the two errors. And let's scroll to the right a little bit here. We have. Um, the new account numbers. So notice, can you highlight those? There we go. So that's the new withholding account ID format. Notice there's a dash in the middle. So in this case, it's 1062, is it? 2463. And there is a dash, but notice in the group below, there is no dash. Either format is acceptable. And if you look at the very bottom, that employer has the legacy ID, which is the 11 digit number, which is the FEIN plus the two zeros. If they, and remember, if an employer has that account ID, they can still use it. But new accounts created after December 1st will only be given 
the eight digit main withholding account ID number. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go back into the portal and upload a correct file with no errors. We remove that one and we are going to upload a clean file. And you should see here that the file was validated successfully, no errors were found, and then we'll hit next to continue. And here you'll want to read this declaration. And then after you read it, check it. Uh, please enter the name of the person who is filing the return. And then we'll hit the submit button. And there, we have filed a return. And you want to keep this confirmation number for your records. Now, we're back on the More tab. And we're going to take a look at how you're able to review previous activity on the main tax portal. And we want to click search submissions on the left. And note here, it's there's a pending submission. This is the file that we just uploaded. And you can go in here, take a look at it. If you realize that maybe there was a employer mistake or any sort of you need to edit it or whatnot you can remove you can delete this submission while it's in a pending status and then upload the correct file and that's a pretty handy tool um, you can also view processed filings which not only is it the returns but you can look at payments and returns So back on the More tab, we're going to have a look at how to get third-party access. Third-party access allows you to manage your client's account on the main tax portal, all from your own username. Please note that this is for uh, payroll service providers only. Your client must create a username for you to request access. The client then must subsequently log in and grant you access. With this access, you could make payments, check the status, status of payments, file one-off amended returns, and also look at notices. Uh, please note that you can still bulk file and make ACH credit payments on your client's behalf without third-party access. So on the screen here, in the upper right, up towards the moose, we're going to click on Manage My Profile. And as an aside, this is where you can manage your password, email, and two-factor authentication method. So on the More tab, we're going to click Request Third-Party Access. And here you'll want to enter the ID type, so put in an FEIN. And for our webinar, it is income tax withholding, and then you'll put their new eight digit account number. And then you hit submit. You'll want to then instruct your client to log in with their own username so they can review and approve your request. And then once you're granted access, you'll see the client's account and you'll have access from there to file. Like I just said, amended, pay, and view notices. Okay, so that's the main tax portal. And from there, we're going to go back to the main revenue services website. And on the electronic services page, you'll see a link. And from this link, you can visit the main tax portal information page for announcements on the launch, launch of the main tax portal and additional resources like taxpayer education videos. takes a second to load. So uh, this page um, contains instructional videos on how to complete main tax portal activities, frequently asked questions, and 
will contain a recorded version of this webinar. And notice here that there are two videos you may want to, wait, to wait, want to watch. Uh, one, managing your main tax portal account, and two, setting up a third party account. And if you have any questions, feel free to call the Main Revenue Services Withholding Unit at 207-626-8475, option four. Now you don't have to wait for the whole thing. You can just select option four and it'll go right to us. Uh, or feel free to email at withholding.tax at main.gov. Now this concludes the demonstration portion of our webinar. And now we would like to uh, answer some of your questions from the chat. Okay, I'm reading this question here. Um, so Laura is asking if we have to have two-factor authentication set up. Yes, you do. And it can be a variety. You can have a, it go to a phone number or to an email address. Um, let's see, we also have a question that, so you mentioned registering as a payroll service provider without our own main withholding account, no main employees versus registering as a payroll service provider who does have their own main withholding account. What if we do not have our own main employees now, but we hire them down the road? Do you need to register? Yes, you will need to register for a main withholding account. And it looks like, oh, we're gonna go back to Jimmy, to James. So I just want to go over a few um, other popular questions that people may have. Um, we did answer some in the chat. If you want to take a look, maybe some of your questions popped up. You can look at some of those answers. Um, so just to reiterate, when is this happening? December 1st, 2022 is when you can begin filing bulk returns on the main tax portal. Meters will be deactivated May 31st, 2023, um, specifically for withholding returns. So again, you'll still use meters to file your information returns, your W-2s, your 1099s, um, <clears throat> until an undecided date. But May 31st is the deadline for withholding returns on meters. Um, another popular question is, will old account IDs be supported? So yes, both the old account numbers as well as the new account numbers can be used um, on your withholding bulk returns on the main tax portal. So if you don't happen to have access to your client's new account ID, um, you can use their original 11 digit account number. This is um, a question that may apply to some employers themselves. I only file for myself. Is there an alternative to using the text file method in filing in bulk. So yes, uh, the main tax portal houses the bulk withholding return submission, but it also allows you to just file a single return for your business. Uh, this has a couple advantages, one of them being your schedule one will populate with payments made automatically. So your payments are tracked. Um, you'll have access to your payment history directly on the main tax portal. You'll also be able to amend there, and you obviously won't need to build a text file. So if you are filing for yourself or maybe just a couple clients, you may find that you know, maybe using the regular filing system is preferred for you. Um, one other point to just bring up again, the W-2 and 1099 specs um, should be posted shortly. So if you don't see those now, you'll see them very soon. See if there's any others in chat. So <clears throat> compounding on another question that was asked, will it complicate anything because we already have the payroll service provider account set up? No, it will not. So if you did happen to register your main tax portal account as a payroll service provider, and then you get your own withholding account or really any other tax account for that matter, it'll be 
intertwined. It'll be on that main tax portal account and there'll be no difference. So there will be no complication in that regard. I see the Q4 specs, where can we get the Q1? Uh, those will be posted in the hopefully near future. So they, let's see. For each main revenue account, will it be necessary to set up a different login or will all accounts be on one login? So depending on, I guess, what you're asking, your everything would exist under one account. So if, for example, you were a preparer, you could request third-party access to your clients, and then all of those clients can now be viewed under your single main tax portal account. Um, and similarly, if you were filing bulk, you would only have to log into your singular main tax portal account and submit your return using that method. As a payroll service provider, will we need to have hundreds of logins for each client? Nope. Um, again, you'll just have to submit the, the one login request to make the username. Um, if you do want to submit a POA, that is an option as well on the main tax portal. I think that's all the questions that I see that I can answer. So thank you guys for all the really good questions. Um, will the portal require new specs for filing and payment. Uh, the specs are relatively the same. There are a few adjustments. If you go take a look at um, our website, we have the new specs posted. There are some slight modifications, like I said, but for the most part, they're very similar. Um, and we did outline some of the adjustments as well as a sample file actually is located on the website as well. So if you wanted to take a look at what a, a verified validated file looks like, that's directly on our website with the specs. And to clarify one more question I see, will sales tax and withholding taxes be under one login? Correct. Uh, your main tax portal account will have all of your main tax accounts. So sales, withholding, anything else that you may have um, will all be located under that one login for everything that's up to our second rollout. Um, so everything in the first rollout as well as the second rollout. So thank you. Thank you guys, good questions. Okay, uh, was there anything further from either Tim or James? Everything looks good. I have all the questions. All right, we appreciate it. Well, if there are questions that you have, that something that you've thought of that did not get answered uh, today, we uh, would encourage you to please send those questions to us. There's a couple ways to contact us, right? You can uh, um, Actually, yeah, we're, did you put up your contact information, uh, Tim? Did you provide that to the group? Yes. Um, services withholding unit can be reached at 207-626-8475, option four. And again, you don't have to wait for the whole thing. Just click option four and it'll go right to us. Or email at withholding.tax at main.gov. Um, and real quick, there are some more questions that are coming in, and we'll just answer those um, in the chat. Okay, so you're going to type in the answers. That's great. Um, so um, we're going to recap the um, important takeaways that we had today. Um, well, you know, first the the date. Right, we've said this I know a number of times, but just to make sure it's clear is when this is all happening. December 1st of 2022 is when the main tax portal will become available for most main businesses to file and pay taxes, review notices, and much more. So you can visit the main tax portal information page at main.gov forward slash revenue forward slash portal to learn when you can get started for your specific tax type. So I'll give you that website again. 
main.gov, M-A-I-N-E dot gov forward slash revenue forward slash portal. That's the one central place where you can learn about all things uh, Maine Tax Portal related. It's also important to note that after May 31st, 2023, our existing systems, iFile, Meters, and EasyPay, will all be deactivated for sales, use, service provider, and quarterly withholding taxes. It's important to note that meters will remain open for W-2 and 1099 submissions only after May 31st, 2023. And you can prepare for the transition for deactivation by printing your filing history from iFile prior to May 31st, 2023. We also uh, want to remind um, everybody, of course, of the um, fact that we have recorded uh, today's webinar. If anyone who has uh, missed a portion of today's session, uh, if you uh, joined us late for some reason, that's no problem at all. Uh, tomorrow you will receive uh, an email with a link to the Zoom site where you can view a recording. Uh, additionally, we also have another session tomorrow and it's an identical session to today, but there's no problem with uh, to join and join us again, uh, even if you've attended today, no problem at all. You can register for tomorrow's webinar, just like you did for today. Just go to main.gov forward slash revenue forward slash portal, and then slide down the scroll bar. Um, you click on the register now link to register for another session. So we also have additional sessions. We're running these sessions um, pretty much every week. Uh, today and tomorrow are especially for payroll service providers, but many of you may have already attended some of the other sessions. We have uh, a segment on uh, withholding and better and another segment on sales use service provider taxes. So those two segments, session one and session two, uh, will repeat itself many different times between now and December 15th. So if you look at the schedule, you can choose uh, one of the dates to attend. You can uh, attend multiple times if you'd like, uh, but they are on a weekly basis and alternate every other Thursday, different segments. You can choose either morning or afternoon. So we, we've provided a number of different times for um, convenience sake, just to make it easy to attend. Um, and we encourage you to do that, take advantage of those. And also, as uh, Tim showed us the website, the uh, main portal information page, those instructional videos are great resources. There's also frequently asked questions there. One other point is that all main businesses should have received, of course, the um, R2 or rollout to welcome letter. And um, we, that was sent through U.S. mail and also through email that provides all the information about the main tax portal, when it's going to happen, uh, when the invitation letters are expected to go out, um, all of that information in one central place. So if for some reason you did not get one of these letters, you can find it right on the website. Again, that's main.gov forward slash revenue forward slash portal, and you will see the R2 letter there. You can click on it and it'll give you all that information. So I think that's everything. Uh, in closing, we hope that you've thoroughly enjoyed our main tax portal webinar. I'd like to thank our panelists and Veronica and all of our attendees. Each and one of, every one of you took time today out of your schedule to join us, and we appreciate that. Um, and um, if any of our attendees did submit a question today that we were unable to address live for some reason, if we need to research it further or what have you, we will certainly follow up via email following today's webinar and be happy to assist you in any way we can. So that concludes today's webinar. We wish all of you a great rest of your day and thank you for joining us.